the lake sturgeon population is thriving and needs no federal protection. That's according to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The federal agency announced today, nearly four years after the Center for Biological Diversity filed a petition asking for the prehistoric fish to be listed as endangered or threatened, that it won't be listing the fish at all. Emily Matesic has a look at the impact of this ruling in a Fox 11 follow-up. Sturgeon spearing season may be more than 10 months away, but news the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service won't be listing the fish on the endangered species list so they can continue being harvested is a relief for those who spear every winter. Sturgeon fishing has been a tradition in many families, and now that tradition can continue. The tradition, however, was in jeopardy. The Center for Biological Diversity, an environmentalist group from Arizona, trying to claim the population was deteriorating after being over-harvested. State and federal lawmakers, as well as local fishing clubs and spears, disputed those claims, pointing to the DNR's management of the population that includes harvest caps in the winter and the monitoring and tagging of fish during spawning, which just happened last week. Wisconsin's, you know, sturgeon population and, you know, and management practices have been, you know, pretty well documented, and I think that's a big reason why we had this decision today. A lot of other states come to look and, and watch a sturgeon and we give them eggs and and and, uh, and they bring a actually incubator up here and they're starting a sturgeon in Tennessee so it's, it's a good it's a good program but sturgeon spearing and this federal decision isn't just about the fish economic wise the bars and uh, you know everything guys that make the ice shanties guys that make the spears hotels you know these people come from around the world to do this and you know it's amazing that uh that they've finally figured out that this population here is super it's the best in the world the spearing season brings millions of dollars to the region it helps to fund the fishing clubs around the lake that contribute to other outdoor activities too it was all the fishing clubs on the lake that you know if sturgeon were removed and we didn't have spearing season that you know, I don't think any of these clubs would, or they would have a hard time continuing to exist without spearing. So, you know, that affects, you know, all, you know, all sorts of people on the lake, you know, the ice fishermen and the hikers and bikers, and, you know, there's lots of people that take advantage of what these clubs do. And with the decision to keep the sturgeon off the endangered list or threatened list, the fishing clubs, spears, and everyone and business impacted by the sturgeon population can keep doing what they're doing, as the annual tradition isn't going anywhere. In Winnebago County, Emily Matesic, Fox 11 News. The Wisconsin DNR would not make anyone available to comment on the federal decision. It only said that it was reviewing the ruling. To take a look at the full U.S. Fish and Wildlife Report, check out Emily's story on our website. You can find that at fox11online.com. So as a man who sort of makes his money on sturgeon season, what was the your reaction to them not going on the endangered list? You know, that that's a great for us, for all around here, for economic-wise, the bars and, uh, you know, everything. Guys that make the ice shanties, guys that make the spears, hotels, you know, these people come from around the world to do this. And, you know, it's amazing that, uh, that they've finally figured out that this population here is super. It's the best in the world. So I'm glad that happened. Yeah, I mean, because what, what kind of impact would it have had had they decided to put this on the endangered list? I mean, this is I'm thinking, a right of, win a rite of passage around here. I'm thinking like millions of dollars it would have impacted that. It would have been crazy. I mean, you would have had 13,000 ice shanties that there wouldn't have been any use for. <laughs> so it's, it's, but it's really great that they finally came to the right decision. Do you think it was, I, I mean, I know lawmakers were on, you know, were on your side. Obviously, the different conservation groups, so, you know, the sturgeon guards and all the fishing clubs. I mean, do you think it's you guys speaking out or them actually looking and seeing what the DNR has been able to do here? I think, I think someone probably investigated with our senators. I'm, I'm pretty sure because we had a meeting in Stockbridge, you know, this winter and everybody, I mean, there's 20,000 people showed up and I, I really think that uh, that made a difference. And hopefully they, someone came down here. I mean, the sturgeon just spawned last week. And hopefully they came down and they sent someone down here and say, hey, hey, this population is just unbelievable. It's, I think the rough estimate, there's like 25,000, 30,000 sturgeon in the system. And that's, that, and that's super. And what really makes a difference is a lot of other states come to look 
and, and watch a sturgeon, and we give them eggs, and and and, uh, and they bring a actually incubator up here, and they're starting a sturgeon from Tennessee. So it's it's a good it's a good program. I tell you, I give kudos uh, all the guys. I've been involved with this for like 30 years, and uh, Ron Brook was the head. We had Ryan Croning, and we had we had a lot of people that really actually does it. Now they have Margaret's is, is running it, and they've had always had good people with sturgeon. They're dedicated people, and you can tell just by what happened here. And Wisconsin sort of understands the importance of the sturgeon and how they are. I mean, while not endangered, they are sort of, you know, this prehistoric fish. They, there's something to to conserve and to admire and to take care of the, the population. They are. They are. They, I think the population is more than it was years ago because they, they, you know, they have a cap. They're not going to not uh, destroy the sturgeon. I mean, they know approximately how many sturgeon are there. They know what they can take out. And I think it's a good system. It's, you know, it's been around for many, many, many years back in the 50s when they started this. There, you know, there isn't any poaching, hardly any anymore that I know of, because people respect the sturgeon now. People, actually, some of the people that were poaching are actually probably involved in the sturgeon to save them now. So that's what happened over the years. Yeah, and, you, and you said it was millions of dollars in economic impact for our area. I mean, oh. put you out of business, right? <laughs> I still have other people that are going to fall in. I mean, it is a good good time of year for me, but uh, there's still a lot of people that ice fish and everything. But, you know, it, it's great that they made this decision. And, you know, there is a problem. I know around the country and around the world that there are some places that, you know, the sturgeon are coming extinct. It's kind of like, you know, the wolf. Some places... You know, they're doing great, and some the wolf are extinct. So uh, I'm glad they did make this decision. It's a great decision for Wisconsin and the area. Is this sort of a sigh of relief? I mean, was did you ever really think that they were going to put them on the list? Was there, I mean, we, I mean, I know there was true concern, but did you ever think they'd really do it after? Well, we're, we were concerned because people in Washington doesn't know what's going on here. When you make decisions from way far away, uh, yeah, we were very concerned. We, we thought it could go either way. You, you don't know because I don't think they really care about the economic impact of, of a small, you know, town in Wisconsin or towns in Wisconsin. I don't, you know, but our senators and our congressmen, that's who got it done. They got it done. They sent the letters. All the fishing clubs sent letters to Washington. So I'm sure that's what made the decision happen. Group effort, just like it's a group effort to keep the population big around. It's a group. It's a group effort. You got, you know, there's all kinds. There's ten fishing clubs around the area. You know, you know, we we all stuck together, and that's what happened. And it's great. It, I said it's great. I mean, I'm sure the taverns all around are really happy. I'm one of them. Because <laughs> so. what do you see, business? I mean, sturgeon. Those that two weeks. I mean, you're you probably have your regulars, but during that time of year, we have people come from everywhere. I mean, if you go talk to Margaret, I mean, they come from Russia. They come, they come from everywhere. You just, there's some people, I pulled some people out of the lake and started stirring years ago who were from Poland. So <laughs> I know they come from everywhere. And, and, it's, and it's great. It's great for everybody here. Very good. Anything else you think is important on topic? No, can't say that. You know, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> on topic, that's why I, that's why I have to say on topic. Oh, I, no. I, I, I am just need too many years. I am just so I'm just so glad the decision came out that way. We were worried, you know, but it, it, it came out that way. I mean, it's it, it's great. Someone did their homework. That's all I can say. And normally the government doesn't do their homework, so it, it's a good thing.